Hello, welcome back everyone to PolySci 110, American Government and Politics. Today's lecture will examine the question, does it matter who votes? Not everyone votes equally often and different groups of people tend to vote at different rates as well. And so we're going to ask, do these differences in political participation actually affect who wins elections or even the kinds of laws that governments enact? Before we answer those questions, however, let's examine a few basic concepts about political participation and why people may not vote. There are multiple forms of political participation other than voting. We will provide voting as the first example of participation, but other ways to participate include contacting officials, participating in protests, donating, volunteering for political campaigns or political parties, and many other causes as well. We will return later to these differences between political participation. But for now, please understand that while donating or protesting or volunteering can certainly help change, to ele change electoral outcomes or election outcomes, voting at the end of the day is what directly determines who wins an election or the numbers of votes counted. And so many of you might have heard at one point or another that the United States lags behind other industrialized countries when it comes to voter turnout. This is in fact the case, but it's different if you look at who registers versus who votes as a share of your voting age population. So here we have a bar chart that ranks various industrialized countries from Australia on the far left to Chile on the far right. And we have your voter turnout for a recent presidential election in the United States is 2012. Um, our numbers have increased just a bit since then, but this election was still somewhat typical. And what we see is that as a percentage of the voting age population, about 50 to 60% of people tend to turn out to vote. As a percentage of those registered, however, it is better at about 80 to 90% of those who register. And so we're left with questions about why do so people bother to register to vote and ultimately choose not to vote as well? There are some countries where the figures are reversed, such as in South Korea, where a higher percentage of the voting age population votes than those of registered voters. This would suggest that people are voting in those countries who have not registered. So registration procedures might be different in those countries. So why might people not tend to vote? or why do they vote? There tend to be three different theories that explain voter behavior. The first is based on economic self-interest. That is, people tend to vote based on how economically interested they are in political outcomes or the outcomes or ele of elections. And so homeowners, for example, tend to vote more often than renters. Those with higher incomes tend to vote as well and those who are retired or may rely on social security benefits or who are older tend to vote as well, since all of these individuals may be impacted more so by changes in property taxes or income taxes or entitlement benefits more so than other voters. That's an economic way of looking at things, but there are other factors as well. You also have the psychological approach. The fact that many people vote, even on a rainy day, suggests that is uh, some argue is reason for this psychological approach that is people have civic interests or a civic duty for some and that they feel these voters feel as if they're fulfilling their duties to the United States as citizens in voting. Also these individuals may be more likely to feel uh, political efficacy or the sense that their vote makes a difference or their political participation can make a difference as well. And finally, there's an institutional model where political scientists propose that turnout varies in response to issues like how competitive the election is, whether people are encouraged to vote, and whether people may have problems in registering to vote or may experience other issues when it comes to the election day process. And so these three different approaches tend to have some explanatory power. They all tend to be partly correct but none of them entirely explains differences in voting from one person to the other or one group of people to the other as well. But does it make a difference who votes or who does not vote? Should we care about who votes or who doesn't vote? 
there are many reasons why people say they don't vote, if you were to ask them individually. The top reasons were why people say they don't vote include registration problems, about 4%. About 6% of people say that they forgot. About 7 to 8% say they don't like the candidates. 11% say they're out of town. 12% say they're simply not interested. Some say there is an illness or emergency. And the number one reason is that people say why they don't vote is that they're simply too busy. And each of these explanations may be categorized as either an institutional, a psychological, or some other kind of factor as well. Being out of town is not entirely clear why that might be. Maybe psychological, since people presumably could choose to be in town on election day if they really wanted to vote. But maybe some sort of economic reason took them out of town at the time as well. And of course, illness or emergency, that's really hard to predict. So does it matter who votes? Should we even care about this? Do differences in political participation actually affect who wins an election or how laws may be enacted? So it turns out that the short answer is yes, but not very much um, so. How is this? It turns out that on average, non-voters tend to favor slightly more liberal policies than voters on average. This is called political, or excuse me, participation bias, meaning that different groups of voters or non-voters may have different preferences, but ultimately, because an election is determined by those who vote instead of those who don't vote, if there are differences in the political opinions or preferences of those who vote versus those who don't vote, then there may be a bias towards those who participate in elections or political processes. And so uh, this participation bias occurs when there are differences between those who participate politically and those who don't, exactly what I just said, and it can lead to less representative laws, presumably. That is, in an American democracy, everyone should have some amount of voice or political efficacy or influence. That is the basis of the one person, one vote principle that the Supreme Court has favored starting at least since the 1960s. And yet, if some people don't exercise their right to vote, then it may be one person, one vote for some people or one person, no votes for other people as well. And so does this lead to less representative laws? The evidence suggests that it does somewhat and that the participation bias differs by states and cities. So what do I mean by this? If we were to look at the net support for policy among voters and non-voters, and if we were to look at their levels of agreement with different statements or policies, we find that the non-voters tend to be somewhat more liberal. So should the government increase services? All voters, not so much. Non-voters in gray, somewhat so. Government should increase spending on the poor. All voters, generally yes. Non-voters, much more strongly in support, as in a percentage agreed with the statement. Government should guarantee jobs and a standard of living. All voters say no, but the non-voters say somewhat yes. Government should reduce inequality in general. All voters say not so fast. Non-voters say maybe so. And so there tend to be, there tends to be this persistent difference between voters and non-voters where non-voters tend to favor more government intervention somewhat and more equalization. And so we see that these non-voters tend to favor slightly more liberal policies than voters, but does this actually have an effect on election outcomes? Political scientists have found somewhat of an effect, but it's a small effect. Most elections tend to be somewhat lopsided, especially for the US House of Representatives. What political scientists have found is that in a simulation study, where we assume that everyone would have cast a vote, but as opposed to those who did cast a vote, a vote, 
uh, there were about eight Senate elections that changed outcomes from the 1990s to the middle 2000s out of about 250 Senate outcomes or so. And so different senators may win elections if everyone truly voted who could vote. But, however, um, it tends to be a small effect, eight out of 250 elections. This may be a small effect as well on the total, but when you consider that the Senate is increasingly narrowly divided, eight elections may make a big difference. Some of you might be wondering, how do we know this information? Well, we can gather this information by examining the candidates, the candidates whom people uh, cast votes for. And so if someone is more likely to be a non-voter, but they did vote, then we can infer what other non-voters like them, who they would have cast their ballots for as well, based along income, racial or ethnic, ethnicity, uh, lines, gender, or other characteristics as well. Does this actually matter for policy outcomes? It turns out that participation bias differs across states as well. In a study by political scientists, we found that uh, low-income voters are particularly less likely to vote in a number of states, including Kentucky, New Mexico, Texas, Georgia, and Arkansas. And what political scientists have done is that they have linked this participation bias in these particular states to reduce spending on welfare in particular. This study was published by two political scientists at Texas A&M University. And so the question becomes, are there other solutions to participation bias? Are there other ways to participate as well? We continue to see that Americans tend not to register or vote as often as people in other countries. However, there are other ways to participate in politics. While Americans don't vote as often, they actually do tend to participate in politics more often in other ways. So if we examined participation among other activities, such as writing to newspapers, writing to the national legislature, attending public meetings, or signing petitions, citizens of the United States actually tend to perform, to perform or participate pretty well or often compared to citizens of other industrialized countries, including the UK, the Netherlands, Germany, and Japan. And so while voting might determine election outcomes, there are other ways to participate as well. The question remains, however, is there participation bias when it comes to writing to national legislatures, attending public meetings, or those other forms of participation as well? I leave that to your, uh, I leave that for you to consider.